Hey y'all, this is A.L. Thick Madame and this is the recap review for Tyler Perry's Sisters. So it started where it left off last time with Andy walking in and seeing Gary in their bedroom, her bedroom, however you want to even say it. And a woman was on top of him, straddling him, fully clothed, and someone else was in there. Who, you know, most of us who have enough common sense and have paid attention to the show, we know that this is supposed to be his therapist. Well, Andy didn't bust up in there and then set it off and told everybody to get up out. <laughs> and Gary is trying to explain to her the situation. And it's to the point where the therapist is like, well, are you sure you want to do that? Maybe I should explain whatever, whatever. And so Andy looking like, girl, like, ain't nobody talking to you. You can get up out. Like, I don't even know why you're still here at this point. Like, she cussed these folks out. She called them all out their name and some old. And it just gets to the point where... The therapist tells the model, as she calls it, to leave because she tried to explain her role to Andy. And my thing is this, even though it eventually got to that point where Andy basically asked the same thing, if this is a part of therapy, why is it that you did not inform your fiance that this is what was going to happen? You know what time she get off work? I'm pretty sure she didn't just come home early in the middle of the day and then this is why this has happened like no like we saw what time it was the other day the other week you know when this aired and i'm saying the other day because y'all know this is like within 24 hours a day or two be to pass by and like with this situation this was like the same day from last time so anyway it ain't like a whole lot of time passed by and it was like, oh, I'm just going to go home on my lunch break. This is what's going to happen. And then she walked in or something. This was after hours. So anyway, eventually she asked, like, why would y'all even do this when you didn't even inform me of this? I mean, I don't understand why the therapist went along with this. Gary even told his heifer that Andy wouldn't be here for it and maybe... He should tell her and all this other stuff. And I'm like, she already wasn't believing you before. Y'all started off on the wrong foot to begin with. You already know it is what it is. So anyway, y'all, it gets to the point where she's just like, look, I'm tired of all of this. I'm tired of your BS. I don't believe you. I don't care what you're saying. Because she really did try to explain to her that it is a type of therapy and that it works for couples and all this other stuff. And all they do is bring another person in or whatever. The reason why he's doing this is because every time he touches Andy... He envisions her having sex with Paris. And I'm like, what kind of psychotic foolishness is this? I don't understand. I do not understand. You are a psycho. Gary is a psycho. So anyway, all the people he's been screwing over the years, all the people he has been screwing, he had a whole wife at the house and he was screwing her and whoever else and all this other stuff. But you are so grossed out by the fact that she screwed somebody else while y'all were not together and you still had papers on your wife at the time if I'm not mistaken like you you have so much audacity I cannot so anyway she done went all the way off to the point where she was like unlock this ring I'm done and he was like well if I unlock this ring we're done for real she was like okay do it so he angrily unlocked the ring and of course he had some slick to say and Tell us, well, go ahead and meet up with that dude you was with the other day. Talking about the lawyer dude. What's his name, y'all? I was about to say, it started with an L, I think. Y'all, I don't want to say his name incorrectly. So anyway, and she was like, you know what? That might be a good idea. And she was like, when I get back, all y'all need to be up at my house. And I'm just like, girl, are you really going to be done with him? Because I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Uh, Danny is at her house and... She going all the way around the world. And I'm like, Heffa, you could have been told this man how you feel. So he can sense that something is wrong with her. And Preston was like, okay, like, obviously something is wrong. You over here talking about just going to bed and that's it. Like, she ain't even talking about having dinner. She ain't talking about sex, nothing. And so he was like, look, uh -uh, no, nah, something wrong. Talk to me and tell me what it is. So... Now, keep in mind, he actually tried to talk to her like he normally talks. And she cannot stand him talking about his day at work because she feels like it is like watching paint dry. And it is super boring for her to hear. And my thing is this, like I've already mentioned before, 
if you're going to be in a relationship with this man and you know you don't like what he got going on, I feel like you could just compromise and just listen to a little bit of it every now and again, like every couple of days. Be like, all right, this your day. You could say this or just be high. Just get high as a kite helper and just listen to it because that's a good one. And you're going to end up losing a good one because you want to be scared for no reason. But anyway, go off though. So anyway, they're talking. She eventually... It's saying that, you know, she's used to having her own stuff and coming home and being alone and just being able to decompress and do whatever. So he was like, uh, okay, I can go and live with my cousin until I can get my own place. And when you want to see me, I'll call you. And so she was like, are you sure that you would be okay with that? He was like, I'm sure. I'm, I'm good. I understand. And I can tell he, he hurt or whatever, but... I don't want nobody to feel like I'm a burden on them. So, you know, in his mind, I feel like he's kind of like, you know what? It is what it is. I'll take what I can get. Because he, like, live for her. And when he get tired, he'll, he'll leave. So, it'll be her loss. So, anyway, Calvin is at the house. And Maurice is there as well. And he is prancing around. Excited because Q is going o coming over. He going to tell him, you might want to go ahead and leave the house. Go ahead and... And exit the premises because a whole lot of things gonna be going on. And he was like, I pay bills here too. I pay rent here too, so I ain't going nowhere. So he was like, well, do what you can do. You gonna see some stuff you don't want to see. So, Q ends up coming over. I'm just like, I'm just so sick and tired of this situation. Like, you can just tell it's some foolishness. So anyway, Andy goes to Karen's job to talk to her. And... Karen is trying to be, you know, reserved and not act like typical Karen. And she's like, okay, what is it that you want? Like, what's going on here? And so she actually was like, look, I need my best friend. Like, can I talk to you? So she told her what happened at her house. And so, like, instead of Karen being typical Karen, she was just like, okay. And you could tell she was, like, just listening to her and let, it do, let her do whatever she's going to do. And so she had to let her know that she has actually heard of this type of therapy before. And for her to agree and, and say this, she was like, you know, as much as I can't stand him, you know, I, I'm just telling you what it is. Like, this is true. This is the type of therapy. And that she said that she actually has clients who've had these types of therapy sessions before and it has worked for them. But yeah, they talking, and it's just to the point where Andy is just over it, and she was like, you got anything to drink, and they over here drinking from a bottle of wine. So yeah, anyway, then they finish their conversation, they are good again, and Pam like, oh, look at y'all, y'all back speaking. And so Andy was like, we, have, we never stop speaking, and of course they want her to mind her business or whatever. Well, somebody roll up. And it's uh, Zach. He rolls up in this very, very nice vehicle after Andy left. And so Pam is like, oh, wait a minute. And so she saw who it was. And of course, to avoid her being nosy and being all up in her business, Karen told her to go home. She was like, yeah, you can go home. I will lock up. So Zach came up in there, greeted her. And, you know, basically told her, look, I'm here because I need to give you this money that I owe you. I know it took a while to get it to you, but I just want to thank you for everything you did for me. It is what it is. She told him that he looking nice and all this other stuff. He was just like, okay, thank you. And he was like, you know, if you have anything to say, this is the time to say it. And so she was like, you're looking real good. I'm happy for you and all this other stuff. Then she was like, you know, well, where are you going? Because he initially was waiting for her to say something and set it off. And he was like, I know you know. I know you know the situation. Just stop lying. So she was like, well, Sabrina wasn't the one who told me Danny did. But yeah, I heard. And just be careful. Money like that can go really, really quickly if you don't use it the way you need to use it. And he was like, okay, I hear you. So he gave her the money that he owed her. And, you know, she was like, you know, as far as saying something to you, you and I have done this song and dance before where we've been like, oh, well, let's get back together and it don't work. So I think that that time is over. So they agreed to be done with one another. They both said, I love you. He kissed her on the cheek and fist bumped her and went on by his business. And, you know, when she asked, where are you going? 
he was like, you really don't know, you really don't want to know the answer to that. And he was like, she was like, oh, for teamless, huh? Oh, okay. And so she was trying to make it seem like she happy for him. And I'm like, oh, okay, though. And she made a point to say he looked good. Y'all, he did walk up in there looking like Ghost. He did walk up in there looking like Patrick St. James to the T. <laughs> I was like, sir, you don't went all the way off. <laughs> anyway, so Andy then left her house <clears throat> and went back to the office. And so she was like, let me call this man. So she ended up calling the lawyer dude and was like, uh, I have the paperwork ready and all this other stuff. So he was like, oh, ready? And so she was like, yeah, I was thinking that I could bring it to your hotel. And he was like, oh, um, well, I'm not there right now. And so she was like, oh, he was like, yeah, I'm in the office. And so she was like, where? He walked in the office where she was at. So they get off the phone and start talking and just start discussing stuff. And, you know, he was like, well, you know, I could forget this conversation just happened and I could just go home and, you know, be in that hotel. And so he was, she was just like, no, nah. they start talking. He realizes the ring is not on her finger and they start drinking and Stuff starts to pop off. They start kissing and all this other stuff. This man that rolled up on her talking about some, I feel like we've met before. I feel like we've had these long conversations before. I feel like we've kissed before. And so she is eating it all up. So I said, me too. I'm like, girl, bye. Like, I don't like people like her. Like, why is it that you can't go somewhere and be single for a while? Go somewhere and sit down and find yourself and heal. That's why stuff don't work out. And then you be in your feelings like, I'm successful. Why don't these things work out for me? That's why, because you won't go somewhere and sit down. So anyway, because like she'll take a break from Gary and hop in, hop on somebody else. Like whether they're a good dude or not, my thing is you need to be like, look, I understand that you're a good dude. I really, really feel like you're a good dude, but I need to go somewhere and sit down. <laughs> like, but she don't never think to do that, and it gets on my nerves. Anyway. So, Zach then rolled up to Fatima's place. He done walked in the door. She looking like, oh, wait a minute. Because <laughs> they looking good. So, she trying to figure out, like, what you doing with that on? Like, did you spend your little money on that? Like, $25,000? You know what I'm saying? I hope you found a place. You should have used that money to find a place. And so, he was like, well, I got this. And I did find a place. And I still have some money left over. For some properties and I have been looking at some properties that I want to flip and do like y'all do in chain breakers so she's trying to understand how sway of it all and he explains to her that he has this money and all this other stuff and see Fatima is just like me like I have not moved <laughs> by these people having money do y'all know how many wealthy men have rolled up on me and I'm like no no because I'm not going to compromise who I am as a person to be like, you know what? They gave me some money and all I had to do was buzz it wide open, tell them, bring it back one good time. Like, no, I'm not doing it. Like, I'm not. Like, yeah, I can't. I ain't finna go into the scenarios because there are quite a few men. And like, in most of the cases, they were not attractive at all. It's like, I don't even want to look at you, sir. So I wouldn't even be able to sit up there and fake the funk. Like I'm even interested in you. I can't do it. That's just not me, y'all. Now, if y'all into that, do what y'all do. That's just not me. I can't do it. So anyway, you can tell Fatima is not into his money because she has her own money. She was excited for him. And he was, of course, wanting to know, like, are you down for me or not? Like, this fool is over here creating a whole, like, team for them. Like, their whole thing, which is uh, Zatima. <laughs> I was like, no, not beautiful. No. Not beautiful, not the beautiful of it all. I can't. <laughs> so eventually she's like, Yeah, yeah, I'm here for it. Because at first she was just like, I don't know about all that. I don't know about all that. And that's after finding out all this good news that he had to share. And he was just like, The way that you encourage me, the way that you talk to me, no other woman has done that. Because of course she wanted to know, like, what's so different about me that you didn't find in all these other women. And so he was like, you are nothing like them. There's nothing to even try to compare. 
So I was just like, you better tell her that. He was like, I don't want no other, I don't want no other dude to be hearing the stuff that you be saying to me. I want you to be mine. Like it is what it is. And so they gonna be together. So Maurice is at the house. And before he went to the back, he ended up um, getting on the phone and calling Sabrina. And so the phone is ringing. And so he was like, here. And so he looking like, why are you giving me this phone? He didn't gave Calvin his phone because he called Sabrina because he was like, y'all need to work that out. Don't nobody have time for the foolishness. Do it. And so, you're like, he didn't even know who was on the phone. Neither one of them knew what was going on. And so, he was like, hello? Sabrina was like, hello? And child, he was just like, yes, I did it. I called. Y'all need to work it out. I said what I said. He went on to the back with you. So, they started talking. And so, she was like, you know, we're grown. We need to talk. And he was like, I mean, okay, when are you available? And so she was like, well, I'm at home. I'm available now. And so he's going to go over to where she's at. So now he's over at her house and they're talking. And so she invites him in and he sits down and they're talking. And she's just like, you know what? You know, I've really missed you. And, he, you know, he said he's really missed her and all this other stuff. And so she was like, oh, okay. And it was just like, you know, I'm sorry for the things that have happened. Like, I'm just like, Lord, I, I'm not here for their relationship. I'm not here for it because she'll be here for him in the actual moment. And then so much suspect stuff just pops off. And then it's like, I don't know about it now. It's like, girl, why do you keep going that though? Why do you keep going to that part of the spectrum? And then after you have done the deed, now you're like, I don't know about all that. Like, what? So anyway, they start kissing, and I guess we're going to have to infer that they were having sex. So then Aaron then rolled up to Karen's house, and he then brought her some ice cream. And y'all remember when they first met, she was outside of the supermarket, and they, you know, she had ice cream or whatever. So I'm thinking that that's what they wanted us to kind of remember. And so she was like, yeah, I needed that after the day I had. Because you know she's dealing with the fact that somebody who she trained and taught all the techniques and everything else... In the hair world, he sat up there and took basically all of her clientele and he is working out of his mama's house and charging cheaper prices. Pam even has sat up there and went to this man and got, his hat, got her hair done. Like, <clears throat> child, it's just a mess. And it's like, because he doesn't have the overhead, he can afford to charge cheaper prices. So yeah, it's just a mess. So she's in her feelings about that. And then, you know, she can see what's going It's like, it's like <laughs> all the stuff you've been doing. And I don't know. Part of me want to be like, you know, you've the you're all you've always been the one who's always on the up and up, and Zach has always been down. But now it seems like Zach is on the up and up, and now you're going through. But, you know, Aaron is always like that little fly buzzing around. That annoying gnat if you will, that's just flying around. It's like, child, why are you here? So anyway, he has gone to the church house and y'all know he has this group of men that he is supposed to be leading. He felt compelled to tell these folks that he was out here busting it wide open. What is it? Laying it low and spreading it wide. And so they were like, oh, uh, we feel as though you don't need to be up in here telling us nothing when you ain't doing what you're supposed to do. You can't, don't preach to us about something if you ain't going to do it and follow it yourself. So the people wasn't here for it and they got rid of him. And so she was like, oh no, well, all you got to do is just stop doing that. And he was like, well, I'm not going to go up in there and lie because I'm going to want to do it again. The solution to him was, let's get married. And so she looking at him like, boy, what is you talking about? Like these people is really doing the most. Well, the end of the episode is now here, and Maurice sat up here and had sex with Q. Q came clean and was like, you do know that I'm gay for pay, right? And I think I said this before, like, he really was giving me that I'm gay for pay uh, vibe, because, I mean, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but there are a lot of dudes who do porn, and they get paid significantly higher when they do gay porn. Because the men don't get paid that well unless they are like the like Brian Pumples and all them other people like back in the day. If you wasn't one of those top dudes up there, and what's that man's name? That that ugly he old and he old he always was ugly, but he old now. Um, Rodney. I mean, what's his name? Jeremy. 
or Rodney. I forgot that man's name. Y'all know who I'm talking about. But the only reason why he was on top of the game, especially with the white people, with the white men, and he was getting paid exceptional amounts of money was because he was hung like a, a mule, horse, all the other things. He was hung. He was well endowed, if you will. So I don't forget if his name was Jeremy or whatever his name is. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Some ugly old pedophile looking white man or whatever. But anyway. <clears throat> but yeah. I don't know if y'all know that. That's just a fun fact that I learned. I don't know how many years ago. But the men don't get paid worth nothing. The women can be off the street. Ain't never done nothing before. And they will get paid better than the dude. If it's a straight type of porn situation. And the dude is just a random dude. And the woman is just a random woman. And the woman will get paid more than him. Like, it just is what it is. The men get paid trash unless they are gay for pay or something like that. Or if it really is them gay or it has to be a specific type of fetish. Like, it's crazy, y'all. It's really crazy out here. But, yeah, he ends up telling him straight up, Maurice, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, I ain't into this for real. I'm gay for pay. Like, what did you talk about? So, he was like, boy, you better get up out of here with that. So, he was like. That boy got on his cell phone and called somebody. I don't know if it was a handler. I don't know if it was one of those situations where he got somebody that's like, oh, I'm going to be waiting outside just in case payment has not been submitted. And he was like, yeah, I'm up in here with this, with, uh, with this, uh, whatever he called Maurice. I was like, what? Maurice even looked at him like, boy, what are you talking about? Like he really was talking sideways about him. And that's why you can't trust a thief. Especially not a thief like him. Man, he is so trash. Like, he really talked that cash money. So, this fool proceeded to put on his pants. And Maurice was like, you know what? You better get up out of my house. And so, he was like, yeah, you better give me my money. He was like, boy, if you don't get out of my house, man. That fool turned around with a gun in his hand. And was like, yeah, what you going to do is we finna go to that bank and I'm going to rob it. I was like, child, I'm tired of my spear. But anyway, <laughs> Hopefully y'all enjoyed the foolishness that is Tyler Perry's sisters. Look, I'm tired of my spirit. I was supposed to put this up a couple of hours ago, but it is what it is. Anyway, I will see y'all later on. I got to start winding down and prepare my mind for work for Friday. Bye, y'all.